Good morning. Let's see how this works. Okay. All right. Hi, everybody. Don't think I can see you yet. Friends, if you're here, can you comment? Oh, good. Okay, we have Brenda. If you're here, can you comment in the chat? Facebook Live has changed their um, interface just in time for Sunday morning, so I can't. Okay, there we go. We got Lauren. Uh, hey, Mona. Hi, Linda and Robert. Okay, so it just doesn't show me. Hey, Cindy. So it just doesn't show me. In the old version, it, it had a little box in the top and it said who's, um, it could tell me how many people are here. And that I think is not happening. But we got Lonnie and Marie, we got Jim, we got Jim. We got Emily's mom, Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Ah, oh, Manessa and her grandmother are here. Hey, Ro. Hi, Brenda. Hey, Braxton. Hey, Danielle. Hey, family. Uh-huh. We have Rob and Nora. <laughs> we have my brother <laughs> who's not coming to church. Um, oh, okay. So I guess maybe you guys can just see it and I can't. That's fine. I don't need to. I just want to um, get a general sense of who we got. Um, we've been up in the 70s. Hey, Katie. The last two Sundays we've been up in the 70s. And so I kind of just want to wait to start until um, uh, until people are here. Hey, Linda. Hi, Megan. Oh, you visited. Oh, well, we're really glad to have you on the internet with us. Hey, Joel. Oh, yeah, bring your mom. Hey, Donna. Yeah, you can also say hi to my brother. Hey, Marty. Hey, Michael. Hey, Steve and Suzanne. Hey, Dorothy. Oh, great. Hey, Maddie and Ryan. Really glad to have you. Hey, Steve. Hey, Julie and Jim. Hey, Ken and Mary Alice. I know some of y'all have been on lockdown. Hey, Wendell. Hey, Jesse. All right. <laughs> You know, David, no one's judging. 
be safe and make good choices and all that, but do what you do what you gotta do. Right. Hey, everybody. Maddox Stanley's here. Yeah, David Ruth is around. Right. Hey, Susan. Hey, everybody. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Now everybody's here. I just got like a ton of comments come. Uh huh. We got the Smith Ashby's. We got Susan. We got Betsy. We got Becca, Emily, Will, Asa, Amanda. Oh, yeah. Kara. Hey, Strong Family. Oh, wow. So we really, let's do it. I think it's time. Good morning. I'm the Reverend Sadie Lansdale, and I'm the minister of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Greensboro, North Carolina. Unitarian Universalists are open-minded about the sources of truth and meaning. We're spiritual seekers. We believe firmly that all human beings are precious and that all life is interconnected. We strive to build the beloved community here on earth, in our fellowship with one another, and in our work for justice. Whoever you are, whomever you love, however you have found your way here, welcome. Our ministry team here at UUCG is me, Cindy Dillard, our Director of Children's and Youth Ministry, who's on this morning. Hey, Cindy, and Mark Freund, our Director of Music. Congregational Administrator is Julie Hamilton. You won't see her in worship, but she is working hard behind the scenes to help keep us all connected. We're located on Hilltop Road in Jamestown, North Carolina, though right now we're all located in our houses and um, we are glad to be here together. In addition to silencing your cell phones, you can take this time to minimize distractions in your online environment. If you're joining us from your phone, you'll just stay on this Facebook Live page if you're joining us from your computer, you might close all of your tabs and keep open only this window in the order of service. And a link to the Google Doc of our order of service is in the description of this video. All you have to do is click that link if you'd like to follow along. We're going to have virtual coffee hour today on Zoom after worship. There's information at the end of your order of service document about how to access it. It went out in your newsletter and there's a link in the description of this video as well. So thank you to Susan Rossetti, Jonathan Behar, Katie Claude, Steve Pearsall, as well as David Ruth for all the tech help. Church leaders have started calling all of you. If in the next week you don't get a phone call and you want one, please get in touch and we will make sure that you get on somebody's list. Similarly, if you get sick, make sure you get in touch with me. You can email me or text me or call me and I'll get back to you. We continue to figure out how to share a Time for All Ages via a YouTube channel and also some music from Mark. Um, it's taken us a little while, but those things are on the way. Your church newsletter comes out on Tuesdays and Fridays for the foreseeable future. And you can, wait a minute, there we go. You can, ah. I screwed something up. All right, I think I screwed something up, but I'm back. Okay. Anyway, read your church newsletter. Uh, it has a lot of information for you as well as ways to stay connected to each other.
you might want to find a candle or a chalice in your home to light along with and if you don't have one easily accessible you can prepare for next week we like this chalice symbol of our unitarian universalist faith to remind us to connect in spirituality and in service, to care for each other and the world, and to create loving community. Before we sing our opening hymn, um, I got an email that said, sometimes it's kind of hard to hear me. So make sure your volume is all the way up, but also um, it has to do with my computer's microphone. So if you can't hear me, the first thing you should do is turn your volume up. The second thing you should do is just comment in the chat saying you need me to be louder because um, I can't look around and see your faces, but we're gonna figure that out together. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit and sing our opening hymn along with me. Number 115, God of grace and God of glory. Verses one, three, four. God of grace and God of glory, on thy people pour thy power. Crown thine ancient church's story, bring its bud to glorious flower. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, for the facing of this hour, for the facing of this hour. Cure thy children's warring madness, bend our pride to thy control. Shame our wanton selfish gladness, rich in things and poor in soul. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, make thy peace our daily goal. Make thy peace our daily goal. Fill us with a living vision, heal our wounds that we may be. Bound as one beyond division in the struggle to be free. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, ears to hear and eyes to see. Ears to hear and eyes to see. Will you join me in our unison affirmation? Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest of truth is its sacrament and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge in freedom, to serve human need, to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with the divine. Thus do we covenant with each other and with God. In that spirit of unison, will you greet your neighbors in your house or in the comments? Good morning, everybody. Great. Yeah, Sharon, just let me post it. I appreciated your email. Hey, Jonathan. Good to see you all.
when we sing our meditation hymn. We allow the spirit to move through us with our breath. We sing the things we cannot say. We sing our prayers and our heartbreak, our hopes and yearnings. We come together in song in this sacred space this morning. Will you stay seated and open your hearts for our meditation hymn? Number 123, Spirit of Life. Spirit of life, come unto me, sing in my heart all the stirrings of compassion, blow in the The ship of justice roots hold me close, wings set me free, spirit of life, come to me, come to me. Spirit of life, we gather in gratitude for this life and this morning. We celebrate the joys among us which are magnified when they are shared. If there is a word of joy on your heart, you may speak it now, lift it up in the silence, or type it in the comments for me to read out loud. Linda Sullivan's sister-in-law, Sylvia, had her breast lumpectomy a couple weeks ago. And after a thorough biopsy, no cancerous cells were found. So we rejoice with Linda and her family. I have a joy, which is that I discovered that Lynn Johnson is my down the street neighbor. And I discovered this walking down my street the other day. Manessa spent the whole weekend with her grandmother, baked bread, singing, a new puppy. Ro is still here. Two years since congestive heart failure diagnosis, but you made it. Time with family, birdsong and snickerdoodles, beautiful weather, Mm -hmm. Social media, trying some fun, family recovering from health scare, negative tests for COVID-19, mm -hmm. windows wide open. Grocery delivery. For these joys, we give thanks. We lift up those who are sorrowful within our community and outside. Catherine Cox Carter, a former friend of the church, has died. And our prayers go to her and her family. To any of you who knew and loved her. 
Linda Sullivan's late sister's son was laid off as well as one of her nephews. For all of us apart from each other. Everybody's suffering illness and separation from our loved ones. Missing work, being laid off. Really missing singing together. ongoing health treatments, cancer, radiation, everyone suffering now. Really miss being hugged, giving hugs. Being unable to attend the funeral, Kate Ashby's aunt died on Thursday. Yeah, fear of the future, fear of the unknown. Miss our families. We miss people who aren't homes. Yeah, fear about our national leadership. People who are still working and risking exposure or people who are laid off. This is indeed a time of great sorrow and great uncertainty. And our hope is that when we name these things together on Sunday morning in our time of prayer, that we lessen the burden a little. And now will you speak or type the names of those people on your hearts, living or dead, that this community might hold them in prayer and in love. Danielle's uncle. Derek, Dennis Hands, Terry and Tim Green, Sharon, Michael Sewell, Tish's mom, Gavin, Linda's sister, Brenda, anybody working COVID wards, Dr. Kendall Gehring, Amy, Amy, Gav, 
Persis, David, nurses and medical staff, Nefer Lewis at Cone Hospital, James, Phoenix, Natasha, Roger, Helen, Jessica Beckwith, Pete, Eric Eno, Thomas Lansdale, Lynn Lansdale. Neil, Madeline's mom, Pete Leary, we send all of these prayers, spoken and silent, up to the love that holds us all. during these few minutes of silence that we share together. You can focus on something you're grateful for, someone you are remembering especially today, or just the pace of your own breath. Will you find a comfortable place in your seat and take a few easy breaths as we settle into our shared silence together? Amen.
Will you pray with me? Spirit of life and love, God of many names and no name, source of all. We are grateful for another Sunday. We are grateful for the time to rest and to connect, to sing and to pray and to think, to know that we do not go through this alone. Our hearts are with all those who are sick, those who work on the front lines of this crisis, essential workers in childcare, grocery stores, and hospitals. We pray for their strength, their health, and their solace. With parents who are working and homeschooling, children whose routines are disrupted, anyone who lives alone, anyone who has been laid off, we pray for their patience and sense of connection for the ability to hold on. For those in jails and detention centers, for those without houses, for all who were already in crisis, all who were already abandoned, we pray for mercy and justice and peace. For those who lead the world and this nation and our state, we pray for wisdom. We pray for people over prophets. We pray for the courage to do what is right instead of what is politically expedient. For all of us, in these times of uncertainty, panic, and pandemic, we ask for comfort, for moments of joy and celebration, and for the sure knowledge that we are loved and that we are never alone. We ask these things for ourselves, for those we love and those we do not love, in your many names we pray, amen. Our reading this morning comes to us from the Persian poet Hafez translated and editorialized by Daniel Ladinsky. To build a swing. You carry all the ingredients to turn your life into a nightmare. Don't mix them. You have all the genius to build a swing in your backyard for God. That sounds like a hell of a lot more fun. Let's start laughing, drawing blueprints, gathering our talented friends. I will help you with my divine lyre and drum. Hafiz will sing a thousand words you can take into your hands like golden saws, silver hammers, polished teak wood, strong silk rope. You carry all the ingredients to turn our existence into joy. Mix them. Mix them. From our opening hymn this morning, cure thy children's warring madness, bend our pride to thy control, shame our wanton selfish gladness, rich in things and poor in soul. The words of Harry Emerson Fosdick, the controversial social gospel preacher and minister at the Riverside Church in New York City in the early to mid 20th century ring ever true. I admit to you this morning that I'm feeling more than a little bit of that warring madness. Many of us, including me, are more than a little irritable these days. I wonder if that's you too. 
But I'm talking today about the righteous rage at the abject failures of leadership we see all around us. Politicians who care more about their reelection campaigns than public health, federal and state, the president and many state governors alike. A stimulus bill that will send a paltry $1,200 to many adults in the country with additional money if you have dependents under the age of 16. Now, to many people, $1,200 is no joke, but the national average rent as of January 2020 was almost $1,500. So $1,200 is a joke indeed, compared to the relief that we could provide, the trillions of dollars that go into funding our military budget and relief for the stock market. This is our perennial problem. We talk about not wanting to create dependency as if we don't already utterly, entirely depend upon one another. Our politicians talk about not wanting to create dependency, as in people who get money from the government will no longer work, people will no longer be motivated to contribute to society if they have their basic needs met. That is the fear underlying this, we don't wanna create dependency that comes out of the mouths of our politicians. Oh, but we do experience dependency at a massive scale. Our politicians depend, for example, on campaign financing from lobbyists and billionaires who want to keep their taxes low. CEOs depend on a weak labor movement and poor labor protections to keep wages stagnant, stagnant and profits up. We as a nation depend on fossil fuels. Landlords who do not produce anything, they simply own property, depend on their tenants having jobs and paying rents. We depend upon grocery store workers, restaurant cooks, anyone in the food supply chain and delivery business, as well as sanitation workers. And most of these essential employees do not make a living wage, yet we all depend upon them. So if ever, ever, you hear the word dependency, coming out of the mouth of some person in power. I encourage you to be very suspicious. This is a false narrative, and the idea that we do not depend upon one another is folly. Shame our wanton, selfish gladness. A colleague of mine, a climate organizer in New York, has offered this vision, the scale of what we need right now as a nation. For my part, I find it inspiring, but also painful to take in such a stark contrast with the response we are seeing at the federal level. But it is important for us to know what we need and what we deserve. We need, he says, immediate suspension of residential and commercial rent, mortgage payments, and personal debt obligations, student debt, credit card debt, auto and healthcare debt. Cash payments to every single person in the United States of at least $2,000, which would go a lot further if we weren't all still paying rent or mortgages or debt. The expansion of Medicare to every single person in the US effective immediately. We need to make sure that people's health insurance is not tied to their jobs as we enter into a massive recession and see layoffs at an enormous scale during this pandemic. We need hazard pay for essential workers, home care workers, health care, child care, civil servants, grocery and pharmaceutical supply chain workers. We need to end sanctions on countries like Iran and Cuba, which prevent them from accessing critical health materials in the case of Iran or sharing medical developments in the case of Cuba. We need to command factories and industrial facilities to pivot to producing personal protective equipment and ventilators, of which we are facing a shortage. We need to requisition hotels, motels, and vacant residential properties for voluntary quarantine facilities. And we need to provide housing for people experiencing homelessness. 
We need immediate decarceration, including detention centers and for-profit and local, state and federal jails and prisons. We need a total shutdown of non-essential activities for a couple weeks until testing capability can be ramped up and expanded. For some perspective, South Korea has tested 6,148 people per million. The United States has tested 313 people per million. We need the abolition of medical patents related to coronavirus treatment and prevention, public ownership of vaccines and antivirals to ensure that people get the care they need that we are not profiting from the suffering of our neighbors. We need immediate planning for a Green New Deal to revitalize the economy, nationalize and wind down the fossil fuel industry as soon as the health crisis passes so that the nation goes back to work. I know that's a lot of information to take in you will see the full text in a link in your newsletter on Tuesday. But what a vision. Fill us with a living vision. Heal our wounds that we may be bound as one beyond division in the struggle to be free. Our current federal response absolutely pales in comparison to what is necessary and indeed what is possible. It is shameful and inadequate and we are right to be angry. This is a moment for intervention and transformation and imagination at the scale that my friend Shay describes. We have the ingredients and we are called to mix them. The late Peter Gomes, a theologian and minister of Memorial Church at Harvard used to say when he was talking to donors and to stewards of his congregation, the good news is we have the money and the bad news is it's in your pockets. And so say we all to our federal government, the good news is we have the money and the bad news is it's in your pockets and it's in the pockets of your campaign contributors and it's in the pockets of the executives of the pharmaceutical industry and the healthcare industry and the fossil fuel industry. The good news is we have the money. The bad news is it's in your pockets. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour. Ears to hear and eyes to see. I wanna close this morning with a story of questionable origin and even more questionable veracity but perhaps you can hear past the facts to the truth. The physician Ira Bayak in his book, The Best Care Possible, a physician's quest to transform care through the end of life, writes about the anthropologist Margaret Mead she was asked once by a student what she considered to be the first sign of civilization in a culture. And the student expected her to talk about fish hooks or flint and tinder, clay pots or grinding stones, what enabled us to make things or catch things or keep things or store things. But Mead said something different. She said the first sign of civilization in an ancient culture was a human femur, a thigh bone that had been broken and then healed. Mead explained that in the animal kingdom, if you break your leg, you die. You cannot run from danger, get to the river for a drink or hunt for food. You are nothing but meat for the prowling beasts. No animal survives the broken leg long enough for the bone to set and heal. 
So this is the part we have questions about. There is a lively debate on Twitter about this very topic. We don't know actually if that's true, but surely you can hear past those questions to the sense of the story. Mead said, a broken femur that has healed is evidence that someone has taken time to stay with the one who fell, has bound up the wound, has carried the person to safety, has tended the person through recovery. Helping someone else through difficulty is where civilization starts. To put another way, care for one another defines society and indeed births society. It is not optional. It is not a, an extracurricular activity or even charitable contribution. Society starts when we know that we need each other. When we live accepting that we truly depend upon one another. That I suffer when my neighbor suffers that the lines around the countries don't separate us from one another, not truly, that I am not free unless we all are free. Freedom and safety at a global scale are possible. We have the ingredients. Perhaps it starts when enough of us see what some have been shouting all along what this pandemic reveals at a deeper level that our current systems are broken and they break people. But we have the tools for healing. And those tools are not primarily technological, though those are essential vaccines and medicines and ventilators. Those are essential. Our tools are spiritual and they are political and they are always already in us. I am my brother's keeper. Tending someone's broken femur is not an act of charity. It is not something with which we occupy our time. There is no distance truly between us. Tending a broken femur is our bowing to the reality that our very lives are in one another's hands. This is the burden and the blessing of our interdependence. Our faith calls us, especially in this time, to offer up our broken femurs to one another and to bring all our heartache and all our hopes into the light. We live with shattered femurs in the world that is. But we are called to set the bone and mend the wound, to ache and to work for the world that yet could be. May it be so for you and so for us all. Amen. Will you rise in body or in spirit for a closing hymn number 159, This Is My Song. This is my song, O God of all the nations, a song of peace for lands afar and mine. This is my home, the country where my heart is. Here are my hopes, my dreams, my holy shrine. But other hearts in other lands are beating with hopes and dreams as true and high as mine. 
My country's skies are bluer than the ocean, and sunlight beams on clover, leaf, and pine. But other lands have sunlight too, and clover, and skies are everywhere as blue as mine. Oh, hear my song, the God of all the nations, a song of peace for their land and for mine. Will you join me in our chalice extinguishing words? We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Go in peace, rejoicing in the power of love and connection we have kindled even here. You can place your hands over your heart for our benediction hymn, Shalom Havarim. This is a Hebrew song that means peace, dear friends, until we meet again. Shalom Havarim, Shalom Havarim, Shalom, Shalom. Lai he triod, lai he triod, Shalom, Shalom. Shalom Havarim, Shalom Havarim, Shalom, Shalom. Lai he triod, lai he triod, Shalom. Shalom. One of the ways that we live out our mission to create loving community is to contribute financially to the ministries of this congregation and to the good work of our community partners. If you'd like to make a contribution via PayPal to the church, you can do so at this link. It's in the description, uugreensboro.org slash donate. Just drop this link in the comments. You can also continue to pay your pledge online. My discretionary fund will be accessible, especially to any members of our wider community affected by preparations for coronavirus, layoffs. If that's you, please get in touch. If you're still working, still getting a paycheck, feeling financially okay, or retired and feeling comfortable, this is an opportunity for you to flex those generosity muscles. Our offering will now gratefully be received. From you I receive to you, I give, together we share, and by this we live. I want to offer you this postlude. It's a recording of some Germans singing an Italian resistance song, Bella Ciao, in solidarity with the quarantine in Italy. As we know, music crosses all sorts of borders. So you can click this link in the description of this video and I'll drop it in the comments. And when you're done, you can go over to our virtual coffee hour and we'll see you a little bit afternoon. Bye everybody.